So welcome to A level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss a typical type of question on nuclear physics from May June 2022, Paper 4, Variant 1. In this question, we will discuss some very important points about this topic. We will talk about binding energy. We will discuss how we can state binding energy in a proper way so you can get full marks. Then we will talk about binding energy per nucleon and mass number. How we can sketch a graph between binding energy per nucleon and mass number. Then we will talk about nuclear fusion. We will discuss when energy will be released from nuclear fusion and when energy will be absorbed by nuclear fusion. Very important point we will discuss in this video. Then we will talk about energy released in any nuclear reaction. How we can calculate energy released. So in this video, we will discuss some very important points about nuclear physics. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For our question number a part A1, we need to state what is meant by nuclear binding energy. And this question is very common in past papers, so you need to understand how to state nuclear binding energy in a proper way, so you can get full marks. We will try to understand nuclear binding energy using example of helium nucleus. Let's try to sketch first of all helium nucleus. Helium nucleus has two protons and two neutrons. So this one is helium nucleus. It has two protons and it has two neutrons. Now we need to understand what is binding energy. Binding energy simply means that in order to separate these nucleons from each other, far away from each other, so they don't experience strong nuclear force. Theoretically, we will say we will take these neutrons to infinity, means very far away from each other. So we will take this one to infinity. Infinity. But this is just theoretical. And we take this neutron to infinity as well. Take to infinity. And we take this proton to infinity infinity as well. So we can say at infinity. And we take this proton to infinity as well. So now these nucleons, they will not experience any force. So in this case, the amount of work done to take these nucleons from the nucleus to infinity, the total amount of work done, that is binding energy. Simply means that that much energy we have given to these nucleons to separate them. In this case, the amount of work done to separate these nucleons is equal to binding energy of this nucleus. So simply we can say in this case, the work done by external agent, this is equal to binding energy. So simply we can write down here, work done is equal to binding energy, is equal to binding energy. We can also redraw this diagram. So here we have the nucleus. We can write down this one is the nucleus and now we have separated nucleons so we can draw one proton here we have one neutron here then we have one neutron here and we have one proton here so they are separated nucleons so simply we can say these nucleons they are separated separated nucleons separated nucleons now we need to compare the mass of individual neutron with the mass of neutron in the nucleus in this case the mass of individual neutron has to be greater than the mass of neutron in the nucleus because in this case the amount of work done is the energy given to these nucleons so as these nucleons they gain energy so the mass has to increase means the amount of work done has been converted into mass means energy has been converted into matter so the mass of this nucleon is greater than mass of the nucleon in the nucleus so simply we can say the mass of this neutron separated neutron are the mass of separated proton is greater than mass of the proton in the nucleus so separated nucleons in this case they have greater mass because they have gain energy in form of mass means the mass has been increased so individual proton is heavier than proton in the nucleus so these are lighter we can simply say they have smaller mass now if we compare 
total mass of this nucleus with mass of these separated nucleons. Total mass of separated nucleons will be greater than mass of nucleus because in this case the amount of energy which is supplied that has been converted into matter means the mass of nucleons has been increased. So in a simple way you can understand what is binding energy. So this is very simple explanation to teach you what is binding energy. I hope this concept is clear to you because most of the time students they are very confused about this one. Let's try to understand this one a little bit in a different way. Now you need to understand if you go from nucleus to individual, individual particles are simply you can say individual nucleons. So in this case you have to do work. So energy will be absorbed. So we can simply say energy absorbed. In this case energy will be absorbed. But if we take these and we make them one nucleus like we have in fusion, in this case energy will be released. So simply we can say in this case energy will be released now we need to understand in this case binding energy per nucleon increases from here you can understand if binding energy per nucleon increase it means energy will be released and if binding energy per nucleon decreases Freeze. it means energy has to be absorbed so simply we can say when energy is released mean e released or simply you can say energy will be released from a nuclear reaction when binding energy per nucleon increases so energy is released when binding energy per nucleon increases very important point binding energy per nucleon increases as you can see in this case if you have individual nucleons mean individual neutrons and protons and we fuse them together and we make them one nucleus in this case binding energy per nucleon will increase and energy will be released and vice versa is also true if binding energy per nucleon decrease in that case energy will be absorbed so energy absorbed so we can say if binding energy per nucleon decreases per nucleon decreases so binding energy is equal to amount of work done to separate the nucleons now let's try to write down our answer for this question in order to write down the answer you have to mention these points you have to mention the binding energy of a nucleus is equal to the energy needed to separate the nucleus into individual nucleons completely to infinity so let me clean first of all so you can see what i have written completely to infinity if you write down these points you will get to mass so this is how you need to state binding energy in a proper way for the second part on figure 8.1 we need to sketch a line to show the variation with nuclear number a and binding energy per nucleon of a nucleus it simply means that we need to sketch a graph between binding energy per nucleon of a nucleus and mass number don't get confused with line it simply means that you need to sketch a graph it can be a line it can be a curve so let's try to sketch the graph between binding energy per nucleon and mass number this is a typical type of curve you need to understand this curve from nuclear physics chapter you need to understand how to sketch so simply we have to sketch this curve you will see it will reach one peak and after that the gradient of this one will decrease so this is how you need to sketch this one so this is how you need to sketch so the peak has to be closer to zero so this is the peak it has to be closer to the left side and after this one after the peak gradient has to be shallow this gradient has to be shallow and before the peak gradient has to be steep if you draw a curve like this you will get two mass it should not start from the origin but it has to start very close to the origin not from origin if you sketch your curve like this you will get two marks and this one is the simplest form of binding energy per nucleon against mass number curve but actual binding energy per nucleon against mass number curve is different so let me show you the actual one but for this question you no need to draw this one if you draw 
simply this curve you will get two marks but you need to understand this one is the actual binding energy per nucleon against mass number curve this is you can see some spikes here but for this question you no need to draw these spikes you can simply draw one continuous curve and you will get two marks for part d it is given to us in one type of nuclear process deuterium undergoes nuclear reaction for part one we need to state the name of this type of nuclear process in this case you can see we have two deuterium nuclei these two deuterium nuclei they combine together or simply we can say they fuse together to form the helium nucleus helium nucleus has higher mass number it means this nucleus is heavier than deuterium so in this case these two lighter nuclei they fuse together to form a heavier nucleus so this process is nuclear fusion so simply you can say this one is nuclear fusion if you simply write on fusion you will get one mark and this is b mark mean it has to be in your answer for the second part we need to explain with reference to over line means or graph in a2 why this reaction results in the release of energy we have already discussed energy is released if binding energy per nucleon increases binding energy per nucleon increases let's try to understand this one with the help of this curve in this case we have two deuterium nuclei they combine together and they form one heavier helium nucleus so you can see in in this case binding energy per nucleon is increasing so we can say binding energy per nucleon in this reaction increases binding energy per nucleon increases so this is one point you have to mention in your answer and the second point you can write down in this case the mass number of helium is greater than the mass number of deuterium so second point we can also say mass number increases means the mass number of products is greater than mass number of reactant so energy will be released as binding energy per nucleon increases it simply means that energy is released so energy released so these two points you have to mention in your answer now let me show you how you can write down a proper answer this is how you can write down your final answer you can say both particles have low a values or simply you can say helium nucleus has higher mass number then you can write down helium has higher binding energy per nucleon than deuterium so in this case energy has to be released for part c in table 8.1 masses of the particles are given and we need to calculate energy released when one mole of deuterium undergoes nuclear reaction first of all let's try to understand when energy will be released energy only will be released if the mass of the reactants is greater than mass of products let's say mass of reactants is equal to m1 and mass of products is equal to m2 so in this case m1 has to be greater than m2 so the mass difference that will be converted into energy and energy will be released in this nuclear reaction so we can calculate mass difference so we can say m1 minus m2 this one will be equal to mass difference or we can also call this is mass defect now let's try to calculate first of all mass difference or mass defect so we have to consider mass of these two nuclei so simply we can say two times 2.014102 so this is mass of these two nuclei this is mass of these two nuclei and we need to subtract mass of helium nucleus and neutron so we can write down mass of helium nucleus 3.01 16029 plus we have mass of neutron 1.008665 if we subtract this we will get mass defect value of mass defect that is equal to 0 0.00351 u so this is in u we have to be very clear this given unit is a m u now we need to calculate energy release energy released by one reaction that one will be equal to mass difference times c square but mass difference we have in a m u we need to understand one u is equal to 1.66 times 10 to negative negative 27 kgs one u is equal to this but we have this much u so simply we can say in this 
case 0.00351 we have to multiply this one with 1.66 times 10 to negative 27 so this is now in kgs and we need to multiply with constant c that is equal to 3.0 times 10 to 8 square of this value if we solve this one we can calculate energy released in one nuclear reaction energy released in this case will be equal to 5.24 times 10 to negative 13 joules so energy released in one nuclear reaction is equal to this one but we need to calculate energy released when one mole of deuterium undergoes nuclear reaction one mole now you need to understand then if we have one mole here so how about the number of nuclei of helium that will be half so we can simply say if we have one mole of deuterium we will get 0.5 mole of helium 0.5 5 mole of helium. Very important point. Now we can simply write down here total energy release. So this one is the total energy released. We need to calculate total energy released. Total energy released will be equal to energy released in one nuclear reaction means simply we can say E energy released in one nuclear reaction. So simply you can say energy released in one nuclear nuclear reaction in one reaction times number of reactions so we have to multiply with number of reactions number of reactions in this case we have energy released in one nuclear reaction that is equal to 5.24 times 10 to negative 13 so this is energy released in one nuclear reactions we need to calculate number of nuclear reactions in this case we have already discussed if we have one mole of deuterium it will form 0.5 mole of helium 0.5 mole of helium now we need to understand one mole of any substance it has number of atoms or you can say number of molecules or in this case simply you can say number of nuclei that one will be equal to one Avogadro's number so we have to write down this one will be equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms or molecules or you can say nuclei but in this case we have half so we will write down 6.03 times 10 to 23 divided by 2 and if we multiply this one we will get total energy released and total energy released in this case will be equal to 1.58 times 10 to 11 joules a lot of energy so if you compare this energy with this one you can see in one reaction very little energy is released but in one mole a lot of energy is released and this is our final answer if you have written all these steps you will get five marks for this question because the total marks for this question are five so this is how you can answer this is a standard method to calculate energy release in any nuclear reaction in this question only difficult part is this one one mole if we have one mole of deuterium how many moles of helium nucleus will we get that will be 0.5 because two deuterium nuclei they combine to form one helium nucleus and that is a little bit tricky part so that's the reason we have divided this one by two and this is our final answer i hope this question is clear to you if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments see you in next video and next video will be coming very soon